Based on this article, only 21% of Americans feel it's good to buy a house now, marking the lowest home buyer sentiment in Gallup's data since 1978. Wow. Lowest sentiment of buying a house since 1978. Factors contributing to low sentiment include substantial increase in interest rates and soaring home prices with the median income currently at four, median house home price at $436,000 compared to three twenty nine dollars before the pandemic. Housing affordability is at its lowest point in years. So, Milton, you and I have an American dream, right? Definition of the American dream per Investopedia. The American dream is the belief that anyone, regardless of where they were born or what class they were born into, can attain their own version of success in a society in which upward mobility is a possibility for everyone. Possibility for everyone. That's why I got millions of people storming our borders. Here are my three reasons to buy a house. I'm not a realtor. I'm not a mortgages. Here's three reasons why to buy a house, which you just talked about. Number one, stability. Yeah. If you plan on moving in a few years, by the way, don't buy a house. If you just want to stay in this community for one, two, three years, do not buy a house. But if you want to stay in a community for five, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, the projections, it'll be all right. It, you, it, it'll, it'll pan out. The things that we're going through as an economy, it'll pan out. But the biggest thing, though, is the stability. Stability for yourself, stability mentally, because one of the greatest stressors in life is moving. Yeah. Got to pack your stuff up, put in boxes, and go. Bags, go. You create yourself a lot of stability. Whatever property you own and purchase, it's your, your own. You don't have to ask anybody for permission to improve the property, build this, take that. That's also the downside because it, it costs you money. You got to fix it. You got to repair it. But also you can improve it. And so, you know, if you're not looking to stay in the community, pocket the difference between what you're paying in rent versus what your mortgage would be. Mm. Pocket that difference for a future down payment down the road. But stability is a big thing, especially for kids. Friends you grew up with, the stories you grew up with, a familiar territory you grew up with, it's, it's uh, healthier and easier and or happier for kids. They call that home. Number two, future equity. Now, keep this in mind. Up to $750,000 of mortgage interest debt is tax deductible. You can leverage that for future opportunities. Down the road, your property might potentially appreciate. Interest rates may come down. You might be able to do a cash-out refinance, meaning that your, if the rates are coming down, your property, your, your, your mortgage payment uh, uh, will 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 the, the the balance will increase, but your mortgage payment stays the same. But now you got the chunk, let's say twenty grand or fifty grand or hundred grand, you can invest in another property, invest in another business. So that's the future equity of potential. The potential of home ownership is future equity. Number three, it's yours, baby. Take yeah. care of you. People take care of what they own. You ever see the difference between somebody renting an apartment versus owning a condo? Yes, big time. Big they time. take care of it because they because they own it. By the way, this is one of the ways I bought a house. I bought multiple properties with a lease to own because I was a much different tenant to a landlord. I said, listen, I'm going to buy this. Here's a bigger down payment. And I treated that property much differently. But, you know, your mortgage payment then also is predictable. So if these landlords rising interest rates, you're, you're not dealing with any of that stuff by because you've bought a house. Now, here's the X factor. It's easier to lower the interest rate of your home versus buying the home for a lower price. Depending on the area, prices have been drastically reduced. So, Milton, let's let's take a look at Realtor.com real quick. Sure, let's look, let's look look back. Uh, let's look at our uh, in our Dallas area. So, if you can uh, take a look at this, um, here's here's Dallas real estate. Okay, I'm gonna go here. Uh, uh, relevant listings. Okay, you can buy a sixty million dollar house here, Milton, and uh, at fifty six nineteen uh, Walnut Lane in Dallas today. Go down there, bro. Buy it today for sixty mil. Look at this place, man. It's tight. Okay, but. Here's the thing. I go here to recently reduced. Why, why, why do you think, Milton, people are reducing the, the listing price of the house? What are they trying to do? Find more potential buyers. Exactly. Okay? So right now here, look, look at here. This $1.4 million house in, in Dallas, they just dropped the price, 50000 bucks. See there? Yeah. Right next to the price, they dropped the 50000 bucks. So what are they doing? They dropped the price. So this is, what, this is what they call a buyer's market. Look at this house here. Uh, 514, look, looking pretty good. That, they dropped to 10 grand. Three bedroom, three and a half bath house. Beauty, man. Okay. Um, if you like uh, downtown living, you know, apartment 812, you like this condo downtown, today you can pick it up for 615 down 20,000 bucks. So they're, they're three bed, three bath, 2,100 square feet type of uh, condo. Uh, let's take a look at Chicago. Huh. What about Chi Town? All right, let's go to Chicago here. Uh, let's go to relevant listings in Chicago. The number one property for sale on the market right now is a $30 million house. I think this is in uh, Lincoln Park. Look at, that, look at that bad boy. Six bed, seven and a half bath, 25,000 square feet. That's huge for Chicago. 
That's humongous. 200K a month. Right? Yeah. That's it. That's your mortgage payment. $197,000 a month. That's all. Pick it up today. They haven't dropped the price on it yet. <laughs> so if you're looking for property, they did drop the Sorry. They go from relevant listing to recently reduced. Boom. Here's some opportunities. Okay. Uh, let's, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at this uh, uh, 2708 West Thomas. Is that a duplex? Yeah. So it's three flat. For people in Texas, people from the South, th- you're not buying the whole property here. You're buying a floor. Yeah. <laughs> no. So you can buy this floor here. This they said uh, apartment two. You're buying the second floor for three hundred eighty nine thousand dollars. Twelve hundred square feet, man. That's so small for four hundred thousand dollars. We say that now because we're in Texas. But uh, who would love that? People would love to have 1,200 square feet in Chicago. That's about me. This is how small and how close properties are in Chicago for 400 grand. They dropped to 6,000 bucks. Crazy, right? You know, uh, looking at these properties, it's, it's reminding me of uh, there's, a, there's this trend going on. It's not a trend, but it, a lot of people between the ages of 24, 25 to about the age of 34 years old, mm-hmm. especially if you're friends, you live in a, within the same city, within the same community. Instead of rent, buying homes, renting out apartments or condos, they're like, dude, there's four of us. Why don't we just rent a big house? Or if there's like five, six of us, yeah. why don't we look into a mansion? Yeah. Pay, it's eight grand a month. We split it among six people. Sure. There's seven bedrooms. That's one way to do it. And now we all live in a mansion. If, if, the, if the landlord will allow that, sure. Yeah. It has become a frat part. Of, now, here's the thing. You're up to the yay and nay of the, uh, of the, of the landlord, right? Yeah. Um, let's take a look at this one. Uh, where's this at? 2734. That's, Shit. that, that's Humble Park. Yeah. Okay. Humble Park, Humble Heights. If you ever watch the show Gangland, one of the biggest gangs in Gangland, that show is from Humble Park. Humble Park. Right? Now we have a lot of yuppies showing up. Well, look at this, look at this house. Five bedroom, three and a half bath. This is normally a two or three flat. Now this is a single family home. You can buy it for a million bucks. They dropped it a hundred thousand dollars. Mortgage payment is fifty six ninety two. So to your point, Milton, it's five bedrooms. So may, let's say two guys, three guys get together. They put together the cheese. Let's look at the payment. Let's look at the breakdown. If you can buy this house, what's the down payment on this house? $195,000 down payment. 2K. Okay. okay. So if you got four guys, that's fifty grand each. And they got it. They got it, right? Yeah, and they got it. You, everybody's got a bedroom. Common areas of kitchen. Common areas of common areas. Living room. Whatever, third floor, first floor, common areas. Yeah. But everybody's living in a million dollar house in Humble Park. Yeah. But you got to come with your fifty k. Right, exactly. And then we got to pay our share of fifty six ninety two. So you split up with what? What uh, we said, four guys. Four guys. So if they have a fifty six ninety two uh, payment, uh, they're paying fourteen twenty three a month each. That's one way to do it. Yeah. And then down the road, you can sell it right. and split split the equity. Now for veterans out there, here's the coolest part: veterans instead of having one hundred ninety five thousand dollars down payment. Use a veteran's loan. Zero down, baby. Look at that. It went from what? 195 to what? Zero. Zero. And the interest rates is actually lower. Veterans, if you're not using a VA loan, I just use my VA loan. VA loans, if you got the income to support it, there's no cap to the amount of house that you can buy. Who busted that lid? Trump during the uh, Tax Cut Job Act. He says there's no more limits on VA loans. So if you're, if you want to be, if you're a veteran... And you want to buy a house like this, no money down. Say, hey, buddies, give me a, give me twenty five k as a deposit. We all live in a, we all live in a, uh, one of the rooms, and you you pocket that difference. You invest that into other properties. They pay you fourteen twenty three a month rent. They're paying your mortgage, man. They're building your equity. That's one way to do it. I love having the opportunity for you to own. Pick a community you want to be a part of. That you're anchoring down from your impact, not just as a homeowner, but as an entrepreneur, as a as a productive member of the society, of the community. You're doing your part. You're, you're part of the school. You're part of the you know, community activities and events, et cetera, et cetera. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.